This is making me really anxious. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome back to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we are back with another Harper's Bazaar Celebrity What I Eat in a Day review. This time, I'm going to be reviewing the queen of daytime television, Kelly Ripa. And side note, for some reason, literally the day I went to go film this, the footage had completely disappeared. This video had dropped off of the search engine on YouTube. But thankfully, I still had the link and I realized they actually unlisted it. So, you're welcome. Now, before we get into it, a quick note about my sponsor. If you're not familiar with Squarespace, it's an all-in-one platform to run your business, whether you're looking to build a website, blog, online store, or use their marketing tools and analytics. As a busy dietitian and blogger myself, I love that Squarespace has features that allow you to schedule appointments through an online calendar and to set up email campaigns for a mailing list. It's also easy to seamlessly pull content directly from Instagram or Twitter. I mean, when everything in your digital presence is working together like this, it makes it so much easier for you to really just focus on your actual business. You can check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Abby Sharp to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so super quick before we dive in, you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. We will be hearing some potentially triggering sentiments from Kelly, and I will be evaluating her meals based on nutritional merit alone, which as you know, says very little about their overall value. It's also worth just saying that this format follows a celebrity's description of what they eat, and it ultimately tells me very little about its accuracy, portions, brands, cooking preparation, etc. not to mention their overall relationship with food. So take this more as general education to the masses, not necessarily as specific recommendations to Kelly. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on a video. All right, folks, let's get into it. I take a glass of water and I have something called Get Off Your Acid Daily Greens, which is spirulina, spinach, kale, all ground to a powder that you mix into water. And it is for alkalining your digestive system. Kelly's intense energy is already making me feel a little anxious. Like I can feel the short breaths and like these tight muscles. It's like she's like existing in this perpetual muscle contraction even when she's just like sitting down to chat and it feels pretty exhausting. Uh, so yeah, I feel like this is already going to be a little triggering for you watching. So just a heads up. As for her first drink, I have no problem with green powders if that helps you get in your antioxidants or if you're not a fan of vegetables or fruit. But I often find that the type of people who use these types of products are the kind of people who really don't need them because they're already getting a lot of greens in their diet. Am I right? But anyways, I mean, for something with so many green ingredients, I actually looked it up and it supplies pretty insignificant amounts of pretty much every nutrient except for maybe vitamin K and vitamin C, which if you get any real green things in your day or you eat things like eggs and fish and meat, you're probably good anyways. The bigger issue I have is with Kelly's suggestion of why she uses it, namely because it's apparently detoxifying and alkalizing. Yeah. So the website also suggests that it will help you gain energy, lose weight, improve digestion, grow stronger hair, nail skin, improve mental clarity, and rejuvenate skin. Now, notice the little asterisk, which leads us to the oh-so-familiar disclaimer that the claims weren't evaluated by the FDA. Oh, of course not, because green powder, while totally nutritious, cannot inherently do any of these things. Now, I know that I've talked about this whole alkaline diet ad nauseum, but it's actually impossible to change the pH of your blood through choosing more acidic or more alkaline products. I mean, your kidneys actually keep your blood pH very tightly regulated. If they didn't, 
we would literally die from eating an orange. So if there are any health benefits to eating foods that are alkaline in nature, it's not because of any alkalinizing magic impact on blood pH, but rather because these typically are just inherently healthy foods like fruits and vegetables. So again, drink your green powder because it's a source of nutrients if you're low in those nutrients or because you like the taste, but not because it will alkalinize your body. Next. Then I have um, a large coffee with ghee and I blend it in the um, bullet. And while I'm having my ghee, I have my persona morning supplements, which is my foundational vitamin, my multivitamin, ginger, and my probiotic. Okay, so I thought we were over the whole butter coffee trend. I mean, that was so 2018. But anyways, while most of the alleged benefits of putting oil or fats in coffee comes from MCTs found in things like coconut oil, theoretically adding butter to your coffee will also slow its absorption and give you a more stable caffeine high. However, evidence suggests that even if this is a legitimate effect, it's likely a pretty insignificant one. As for Kelly's choice of coffee fat, ghee is clarified butter with the milk solids removed that has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for its alleged health benefits. But ghee, much like regular butter, is predominantly a saturated fat. Now, whether or not that is a legitimate issue for heart health is definitely up for debate. As I discussed in my saturated fat video right here, one 2016 systematic review and meta-analysis with a total of over 600,000 participants found that there was actually a small to neutral effect of consuming butter on things like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and all-cause mortality. However, other studies have shown that saturated fats like butter do actually increase LDL cholesterol. So this means that while there may be no clear indications that butter is the main or sole contributor to these diseases, it can potentially impact markers of heart disease like cholesterol. Now, while this study found little to no effect of consuming butter, it also mentioned that including more unsaturated fats do have positive health benefits. So does that mean that you should go to town and eat more butter or more ghee? Probably not. I mean, too much of anything isn't really good for you and eating more saturated fat, which has either a negative or neutral effect, should not really be the goal. Rather, according to the research, it may mean that enjoying a little bit of butter or a little bit of ghee in your coffee or wherever may not have the overwhelming negative health effect on heart health that we once believed. As for the ghee versus butter debate, while ghee may have a higher smoke point and be lower in lactose since you know, the, the milk solids have been filtered out, there isn't really any quality research to suggest that it's a much more healthy fat compared to typical butter or to cream for that matter, which of course is more commonly added to coffee. As for Kelly's supplements, she's taking a probiotic, multivitamin, ginger, and omega-3. No major red flags there. However, a lot of people think that you can't take a probiotic with your coffee because the heat from the drink will actually kill off the good bacteria. And while there isn't actually a lot of strong evidence to determine the effect of drinking coffee with probiotics, the general consensus is that by the time that the coffee or tea is cool enough to actually drink, it's close enough to the internal temperature of the body in which the bacteria is really accustomed to anyway. So it's not really a big deal. Anyways, let's see what else she has to say. A green apple, cut up, and then I take two tablespoons of almond butter and a teaspoon of cinnamon. I blend it all together and I put the apples in there and I eat that like a porridge, if you will. And that is my first chewable food of the day. I can just kind of imagine Kelly like meticulously measures all of this out, you know, like making sure she gets every little microgram of nut butter out of the measuring spoon and like weighing the cinnamon like a chemist. Um, just my, just my, my gut feeling from this interview. But I don't know, aside from the compulsive nature of Kelly's first chewable food, this does sound like a pretty good snack, I guess. I mean, 
not really a meal in my books. This is a snack, but we do have some protein and fiber and healthy fats in the nut butter and fiber, rich carbs in the apple. So yeah, despite it feeling like pretty overly calculated and restrictive, it is a nutrient dense choice. I work out um, usually after I wrap for the day. I work out seven days a week. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with having like a regular exercise routine, even working out daily if that is what feels good to you and your body. I also feel a need to move my body in some way most days of the week and the month and the year. But rest days are actually just as important as working out because it's during that time off when our body can build strength, endurance, and muscle mass. I mean, resistance training, for example, breaks our body tissues down, and rest days allow those muscles and nerves and bones and connective tissues important time to rebuild. So I don't know for sure what kind of activity Kelly does, but if she did want to do something every single day, I would suggest choosing some gentle stretching, yoga, or low impact walking on one to three days of the week between some of those heavier training days. Okay, let's see some more food. Big salad of microgreens with avocado and toasted nuts on top. Sometimes I have pine nuts, sometimes I have pumpkin seeds, sometimes I have walnuts, sometimes I have cashews, whatever I'm in the mood for. Whoa, really switching up and being spontaneous with those nut and seeds options, Kelly. We are living on the edge. <laughs> no, but I'm just teasing. That does sound like a really solid salad, delicious. I mean, we've got lots of healthy fats from the avocado and the nuts or seeds, and of course fiber and antioxidants from the greens and the nuts. Um, but considering how green this meal is, I think it's safe to say that it renders that green powder from the morning kind of obsolete. Avocado toast kick of 2015 to 2017. It was two years where avocado toast was pretty much the foundation of my diet. And I had it with just about every meal. Sometimes I would fry an egg and add that on top. Sometimes a piece of cheese would accompany the avocado toast. Okay, so I am glad to see some carbs in the toast to add a little bit more balance to the salad lunch. But I would still say that we are kind of missing out on the protein here, especially as a post-workout meal. Now we now know that we don't have a crazy tight anabolic window like we used to think. So you don't have to have a substantial amount of protein, you know, within an hour post-workout if you don't want to. But that is if we've had some substantial protein on board before doing the workout. And since her breakfast only had like seven grams for breakfast, she could still use a good boost post-workout. Now, she did mention that Sunrise Her Avocado Toast is accompanied by an egg and Sunrise by a piece of cheese, so that will help out a little bit. But in general, I would say that this brunch meal of hers is largely just vegetables, a little bit of carb, and a lot of fat. All really healthy stuff, of course, but it's a little same-same, especially after all the nut butter at breakfast. I have a feeling that this is kind of just how Kelly rolls, but let's take a look at dinner. The smaller version of the same salad that I had for lunch, and then I have either mixed grilled greens or whatever's in season. I try to eat whatever is in season in terms of vegetables, and then I have usually some sort of like plant protein mixed in there, like a grilled tofu. Sometimes I'll have a fried tofu. Sometimes I have some sort of tahini. Okay, so again, kind of same, same, right? We've, we've got more of the same salad we had at lunch. We've got more vegetables, but hallelujah, we do have a solid source of quality plant-based protein. So I love tofu, I love tahini, um, although you would have to eat a lot of tahini to get like a meal portion of protein, but hopefully the serving of whatever she chooses makes up for the lack of protein earlier on in the day. Let's take a look at snacks. I have handfuls of nuts, lots of raw cashews, lots of raw almonds, lots of raw pistachios. I never eat more than a handful, but I have several handfuls a day. Case in point, more nuts. And I love nuts, so I'm not, I'm not knocking down nuts here, but 
We've had nuts at the breakfast, nuts at the lunch, nuts at dinner, and apparently several handfuls of nuts in the day. But never more than a handful, she says. Never more than a handful. That is Kelly's rule. But it seems like Kelly has like a narrow list of safe foods that she feels comfortable with that she kind of just repeats again and again and again. And they're all like super healthy foods, so I cannot critique her on that. But she's missing out on multiple opportunities in the day to get other nutrients in. So she could easily swap her nut snack one of the times for like some yogurt and berries or crackers and hummus, oven roasted chickpeas, like you name it. There's lots of other great choices out there other than just raw walnuts and pistachios. Just saying. But at my age now, I find that I, it takes too much effort to get ready, so I just stay ready if that makes any sense. But in general, in general terms, I try not to cheat too much. What I will indulge in is like a delicious chocolate covered almond or chocolate covered cashew, some sort of like, so I still feel like there's something healthy in there. I also have been making a chia pudding, like delicious chocolate chia pudding. Okay, so I assume my get ready she means like keeping her body in top shape. And as a national TV host, I totally understand why she would feel that desire to like keep herself consistent. There really isn't like an off season for Kelly. So it does make sense, not just for Kelly, but really for anyone to try to avoid weight cycling or yo-yo dieting or building such an unsustainable diet that they feel that they need to cheat every week. So I appreciate that Kelly isn't necessarily on board with like the whole cheat day lifestyle, but I also think it's quite obvious by the rigidity and repetitiveness of Kelly's diet that there also isn't really any room for regular mindful treats. I mean, her definition of a treat is a chocolate almond or cashew, or it's chia pudding with some cocoa powder mixed in. So she says when she does treat herself, it has to be something that still feels like it has something healthy in it. So she feels good about that choice. Maybe this is sustainable for Kelly as I think it's just kind of like a type A personality thing, but it would probably be really unsustainable for a lot of people long-term and those cheat days would probably get completely out of control. If you were to ask me this one year from now, I will have three entirely different meals, but it will be the same rotation of meals for just about a year. Like the same three meals for a year? That's like a whole year, 365 days with no other sweet in her life other than a sad chocolate almond and maybe a slice of cake on her birthday. I kind of feel sad for her. I feel bad for Kelly with this. Ugh. I am in no way diagnosing anything here as I get the sense that Kelly's just like got this intense type A personality. She likes to control things. She likes to be meticulous. But I have to also address the elephant in the room. And that is that this whole interview is screaming orthorexia, an interview that actually got unlisted for whatever reason. Now, if you don't know what orthorexia is, it's an unofficial eating disorder described as healthy eating taken to an extreme. It generally is characterized by extreme inflexibility, perfectionism, fear of processed or junk foods, extreme routine around meals and foods, and like compulsively checking nutrition labels and ingredients. I know about it really well because I suffered from orthorexia myself as a teen. So as somebody who lived it, I can hear my old voice in people all the time. Now, again, I am not insinuating that this is something Kelly struggles with at all, but I'm just flagging this because I don't want viewers to think that this diet, while objectively super healthy, needs to be the only healthy way to eat. Because for some people, myself included, this level of dietary purity and inflexibility would be pretty triggering and potentially kind of dangerous. I also want to just kind of remind everyone how important variety is in your diet. 
even more so than choosing exclusively healthy foods, in my opinion, as a dietitian. Because when you're only eating a handful of foods every single day for 365 days of the year, even if they are like super healthy, there's no way you're giving yourself an opportunity to expose yourself to every different micronutrient and antioxidant. No one needs to get in every single nutrient every single day. But the idea is that if you're switching things up regularly, you're much more likely to meet your needs over the course of a week or a month or over time. And if Kelly did that, she probably wouldn't need all of those supplements. Now, Kelly closes off the interview by saying that she takes some CBD before bed, which is probably the most exciting thing I heard the woman say the whole interview long. But also, kind of not surprised that she needs to take something to help her relax at the end of the day like that. I kind of feel anxious just like listening to her talk. So I can imagine that tension probably does take some time to shake off. Anyways, in conclusion, I want to remind everyone that this is not a dig at Kelly. I have been a Kelly Ripa fan since the early days with Regis, rest in peace. I used to watch their show religiously when I had cable and I think she's adorable and beautiful and so funny but her diet is so intense. I think that's the word of the day, intense. And I want people to know that we can still feel great and even look great if that's your goal without the need to eat the exact same meal or handful of foods 365 days of the year. And on that note, thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with some of your thoughts. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.